in the audience here, we've um, redesigned the subject to address the issue of science anxiety in the sense. We had high failure rates, as everyone in this room probably knows. Um, I was just reviewing a paper for a um, publication on science anxiety, and it really sums up the issues that many of our students come when they enter into our, into our subjects, and that is they have an aversion to science, and that they've already decided before they come into the classroom that they don't know the material, that they can't learn the material. One of the, we've, we introduced many changes to the subject, into the subject assessment. One of the things we introduced in 2012 was um, a pre-workshop quiz with the specific intent to say to the students, you guys need to prepare before you come to class. That was the purpose of the pre-workshop quiz. The other side of it was we also were anxious the conversation we had at the time was we were anxious that we didn't want to overburden the students. So the quiz was supposed to, although it was a hurdle task, something they had to complete, it wasn't meant to be onerous. In 2012, across both faculties, Bunzora and Bendigo, we um, introduced the idea, we said it was going to be a 10 minute activity that students should complete before class. If they don't do them, they're not going to pass the subject. And I had the pleasure last year of failing students after four weeks into semester saying, you know what, you haven't met the hurdle, you're not going to pass the subject. We changed it a little bit this year. And then the other thing that we, so at the end of the year, the um, Bendigo faculty, sorry, it's not a Trevor Health School faculty, Royal Human Bio Science faculty, conducted a survey and asked the students, what did you think of this? And we got our responses, which I'll talk about in a minute. This year we, over the summer, the faculty bought for us proprietary software. And I'm not really here to promote the proprietary software. I'm here to promote the idea of actually the quizzes using an assessment task every week as part of the formative assessment and as part of a way of keeping the students on track with their study. And also to say the don't be, that you shouldn't be fearful of overburdening the students because the students actually like the activities we gave them. Page down. Or okay. Okay. The first thing is at the beginning of semester, I said to the students in the introductory lecture, there actually is a student workload policy, and this student workload policy tells me how much work I'm allowed to give you. I don't know if people in this room know there's a student workload policy. I have met quite a few faculty colleagues who didn't know there was such a policy. The policy says that for every credit point, there should be 10 hours of work, which works out for a 15 credit point subject, surprisingly enough, 150 hours of work. We have the students in the classroom for 48 hours. That means there's 102 hours of work which you're supposed to do out of the classroom. I don't know many students who know that. I certainly told them that in their first lecture for, for this subject. I then said to them, what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to tell you what 40 to 45 minutes of that work is going to be. You're going to get online, you're going to do this quiz I tell you to do every week, and if you don't do this quiz, you cannot get meet certain assessment tasks. You cannot participate in certain assessment tasks. The quiz itself is worth nothing. It's all about getting you to study. So one of the effects of this, I think, is I received no complaints during semester. We've got too much work to do. Because the students know up front that they're going to be doing this work outside of the classroom and this is expected of them from the university. Interestingly enough, in week three of semester, again, we're using proprietary software. We had a whole lot of, lot of registration issues. We did. One of the, so some of the students who were having registration problems, I did ask them the question, is this really worth your while? So by week three of semester, I was getting feedback from students about this. This is one student, I happen to know this student, she scored an A for the subject, so she's a very motivated student. Yes, I find the weekly quiz is very useful. The first week I attempted the quiz I did after the lectures, I stayed at home myself, made it seem relatively easy. The next week, I used it as a study guide. So by week three already, the students are saying, I'm using this as a study guide, this is having a positive impact on my study, it's helping me keep up to date. Um, I've got 
again, another student, again, roughly the same time in semester, right, the beginning of semester. I'm finding the quizzes quite useful as it helps to meet the material I learned in lectures. Now, I think this is supposed to be the negative comments I received. The student wrote to me and said, the quizzes aren't helping my learning. But I've quickly discovered that the quizzes are great revision tools for the aspects of biologies that I've learned. So even in the negative tool, she says, not helping my learning, but it is actually helping me learn. <laughs> so that's week three. Um, towards the end of semester, Janelle Page and I conducted a survey of, all, of the first year students doing this subject. And this is, as I said, HBA. Part of the reason we're doing this is that the faculty has invested a lot of money in this software that we're proprietary software that we're using. So we wanted to get some a sense of how the students feel about the software and part of our responsibility for having purchased in the first place. We did two surveys in the end. Uh, and they paralleled the surveys we did in 2012. The first survey we did was a paper-based survey where we went into the workshops, not the workshop I conducted, so they weren't my students per se. Uh, we did the survey, three workshops in the Bendigo campus. Turned out we ended up doing two workshops at the Shepparton campus, so every student in Shepparton got surveyed, and one workshop at the Mildura campus. So we surveyed across the campuses of the rural health school. Except one. Except one. And we deliberately didn't do one for a reason, and I'm not going to go into that now. Um, in the paper bait survey, we captured 20, uh, sorry, 32% of our students. So we're, um, what I'm reporting back is on feedback from 30 percent of the students. On top of that, we did an online survey to see, just to give more students the opportunity to respond. So it's the same questions but done online. The only difference was we added one question, have you done the paper-based survey? And we got a further 16 percent of students responding, none of whom had done the paper-based survey. What this tells me is, in fact, there's such a high response rate for the online survey is that the students wanted to tell us something. And what they wanted to tell us was, is, is I'm very happy about, very stoked about to some degree. So we captured roughly 40% of our students. In 2012, we captured roughly 15% of our students, and they needed to be harangued to get online to do it. In 2013, they jumped at the opportunity to do it and give us some feedback. So we were, we were pretty happy about that. So you'll see 40% would be 200, 250 students? Um, it would be 132 plus 69, 190. Yeah, so a, a number, a high number. <laughs> yep. Okay, one of the questions we asked, and I'm sort of bucking the trend here, I suspect. One of the questions we asked is, what's your most important learning tool in the subject? And in both 2012 and 2013, the students still tell us lectures the most important thing in their learning the most important tool for their learning. They don't want to give up lectures. And what's surprising is that we've got more respondents than we have people attending lectures. <laughs> the next most important thing that the students uh, find for their learning is the workshops. And the students really like the workshops. And the facilitators, since we've started a new subject in 2012, at least the facilitators in the Rural Health School, really like the student engagement in the workshops. And we one of the things we will say is, is that to get that student engagement, we think the quizzes are uh, contributing to that. Students come into class prepared to do, the, to do the material, to do the study. Now, John, you all have seen this before. So I've just copied somebody else's talk. Um, we asked them some questions. So here's just one of the survey questions. Where the pre-workshop activities? And again, I'm not here to promote mastering AMP or the proprietary software. It's just what the question was. Uh, encourage me to stay up to date with my studies, and the students overwhelmingly said yes. We asked them the same question in 2012 about the LMS-based quiz, and again the students said yes. There was no statistical difference between 2012 cohort, 2013 cohorts on this question. And then to the uh, right, you've got uh, one of these feedback comments here from the students. Mastering AMP has been a helpful resource in keeping us up to date with all the material learned. Bring it, bring it all together each week in a very, in, um, it's a very useful study tool. The next question we asked was pre-workshop quiz activities, uh, mastering work would review of my weekly material, and as you can see, the students broadly agreed with this. There were very few students disagree with that statement. 
and again, we've got an exa a sample of extended answers question there. The quizzes were useful to help review the topic material. I have uh, a couple more data slides. I'm not really going to go into them in, in much further. There were drawbacks to this. One of the reasons we wanted to promote the proprietary software was its multimedia useful, well, its multimedia um, aspect of it. Although I'm told multimedia is not the term I should be using anymore. The quizzes are tied tightly to the textbook, not to the lecture material per se. And the quizzes use figures, diagrams in the textbook as for labelling activities or for animation, things like that. So one of the questions we asked, which was not in our previous survey, was did you actually find them visually engaging? Was the multimedia good? The students, again, came back overwhelmingly and said yes, they did. And the other question we asked them was, was this really wasteful of your time? Was it too onerous? And the students told us, no, it wasn't. One of the things, so just going back to the extended answers for a second, one of the things that we took back from this, when we did the quizzes, we set them up we didn't want the students to fail. We wanted the students to get success. We, wanted, we said to the students at the outset, you must complete every question successfully. If you don't, you won't get uh, marks for something else down the track. So I gave them an, effectively an unlimited attempt at the questions. One of the things the students told us in the feedback, and this is an example of the statement, was that having unlimited attempts at the questions actually was a disincentive for us to learn. We just randomly gave the answers. At some point, we gave up trying to learn. We just randomly gave the answers. So here we have, I enjoyed the test, however, at times, it let's just get in, because I had 30 attempts to do the quiz. So one of the things to take away, which we're going to do next year, is, is that we're actually, we're going to change it from saying you have to have it be 100% successful to actually saying you have to reach a certain threshold of success, 75, 80, 80 percent, but you have a restricted number of attempts. You only get two or three attempts to do it. And if you don't succeed in those two or three attempts, you won't get your grade for something else later on. The other thing which the students told us was because this material, this quiz was tied, was tied to the textbook and not necessarily the lectures, sometimes they missed the relationship to what we expected them to know. So what I've shown you here, this is an example of a, uh, what our a lecture learning objectives. The students have this in their student study guide. Said, this is what we're covering in this week's lecture. This is what the workshop will cover. So between the lecture, the workshop, and the quiz, those are the things we expect you to learn. When I wrote the quiz for neuroscience, they were my objectives. They were the questions I asked the students were based on those learning objectives. Yet a small percentage of students kept coming back to us and saying, I don't see how the quiz relates to what we're learning in lecture. In a sense, we haven't made the connection of what constructive alignment really is. We haven't told them. The we've, we've constructively aligned our course, but the students haven't picked up on the fact that everything we're teaching them relates back to these learning objectives. And my final thing is to say, we were hoping that by adopting the proprietary software, because it is more engaging, and because it gives the students more feedback, and because it has all the, the visual animations and stuff like that, that we would actually see improvements in the students' marks. And what we, the stars on the top of the bar, what we're comparing here is with similar assessments between 2012 and 2013. They're weighted differently, so they're not worth the same thing, but they are occurring at similar places and times in the semester, asking similar questions. And we're comparing results from one year to the next. And the stars indicate where you see statistically significant difference. These tests here occurred early, midway through the semester. These tests here occurred at the end of semester. And this is your final exam. And what you can obviously see is that at the beginning part of the semester, the students outperformed in 2013, outperformed the students in 2012. We're really happy about that. That's what we wanted to see happen. That justifies the investment the university's made in the software. By the time we got to the end of semester, so just to give you one more complicating factor, this assessment here, there are two marks there. The assessments were done at the same time. One as an individual, one as a team. 
This is the individual assessment. This is the team assessment. This is the second assessment at the end of semester. This is the individual assessment. This is the team assessment. In that second assessment at the end of semester, which was a harder assessment than the earlier one, our students in the rural health school did substantially worse than they did in 2012. They were demotivated or they didn't prepare for this assessment properly. What we did notice, however, was that when they came back and did the assessment as a team, they still scored equally as well. My interpretation of this is that whatever we've done in 2013, our weaker students have actually not engaged in the material as well as they had in 2012, even as our stronger students were still performing very well. And so that, that's reflected in the team mark because the, the, the maximum marks the students are getting are equally as high between the two years, even as the individual marks are falling. The other thing that we saw was that the final exam mark, which was covering online, which was covering self-directed learning, again, the students in 2013 did worse than the students in 2012. What we think the reason for this is, is that by the time the students came to that, those final two assessments, they already knew they'd passed the course in 2013. In 2012, they were still uncertain. A lot of students were still on the cusp of the path of fail. They were motivated to study. In 2013, they knew they were in part, and so they didn't pay for the subject the same, the same attention. And I have some quantitative data to support that, that is how many times they actually did the online learning activity. Um, but we think that what's happened in 2013 is because we made the subject too easy to pass, students didn't try to excel, or at least a certain proportion of students didn't try to excel. So thank you very much. Yeah, I was just going to agree in the workshops that I was teaching, it was a bit of a theme of, I know what my mark is already, I'm sorted. So that was really disappointing, was trying to educate them. So one of the things which we take away from this is that next year, we want to make the hurdle of passing a little bit harder so that students are more motivated to actually work. So I guess one of the lessons I'm taking from this is if you make it too easy, students don't work either. And they don't value the subject the same way. Actually, they do. One of the things which we're consistently getting, and all the verbal, all the feedback I've been getting, is that this is the subject that they find much intellectually, um, in intellectually stimulating. And one of the things, and going back to where I started, one of the things I think we have combated here is that idea of science anxiety. The students are interested in this material, and they don't find it overwhelming anymore. 